I hate to break it to you, but you're almost certainly doing CSS animations wrong and it is slowing down your site. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Also, if you're interested in really taking your CSS skills to the next level, make sure to check out my full CSS course I'll have linked down in the description below. So to get started, I just have some really basic HTML here. I just have a bunch of p tags with some lorem ipsum text inside of them, as you can see on the right hand side of our screen. I have really basic body style just to make sure they're side by side with each other. And then I'm just styling these p tags here with a little bit of styling just to make sure that they show up easy to see over here in that gray background. And most importantly though, I'm animating them up and down as you can see, it's probably quite annoying to look at. And I have two different types of animations that we're gonna use. One is gonna be using margin, and one of them is going to be using translate, and they're both gonna do the same animation. If I swap this from margin down to translate down, and I save refresh over here, you'll see it is exactly the same animation. But there's actually a huge problem with the margin version that the translate version doesn't have. But it's difficult to actually see this just by looking at this animation right now because I have a rather you know powerful enough computer that it's able to animate this no problem without any hiccup. But if we just right click here and inspect our page, let me pull over these browser tools real quick, and we just real quickly go over here to the performance tab, we're gonna notice something really interesting about the differences between these two different types of animations. Now, like I said, my computer is powerful enough that it doesn't have any problem doing this margin animation or the translate animation. They both look perfectly smooth. But what we can do in this performance tab is go to this throttling section. We can drop this down and throttle our CPU to make it run slower than it normally would. So we'll do six times slower. And now if I do that, you should notice that this animation on the right is much choppier. As you can see, it really is not working very well at all. And what I can do is, as you can see, we got our choppy animation. I can go over, I can change this from margin to translate, for example. Now we're doing our translate animation. And you'll look over here, this animation is perfectly smooth, even though my computer is six times slower than normal. But why exactly is that? Well, first, let's just take a look at these animations to see what they do. All that the margin down does is change our margin top from zero to 300 pixels, and it does that up and down. While translate, instead of changing our margin, is changing our translate Y from zero to 300 pixels. Both of them are doing the exact same thing. They're moving our element down 300 pixels and then back up, but the margin one is significantly slower and taxes my computer drastically and the animation looks terrible. So in order to understand why that is, let's change back to the margin translation here. We can see we have our super choppy animation and I wanna click this record button up here and that will allow us to record a little bit of time. We don't need that much. We'll just stop after a couple seconds and it's gonna give us some incredibly detailed performance analytics as you can see. And what I wanna do is I wanna just narrow down on a small section of this graph. So I'm just gonna drag out this bar for a very small section and we can see everything that's happening in the graph down here in this main tab. We just open this up. You can see all the details down here. And if we look over here, we have layout being run. We have the update layer tree, which is kind of lumped in with layout. That's why they're both the same purple color. We then have painting happening. And finally, way down here, we have composite layers. And you'll notice something really interesting about these three different sections. Layout, it's fairly slow. You know, it's taking over here about 22-ish milliseconds to do layout. Then we have paint here, which is taking about 12 or so milliseconds. And then composite, which is less than one millisecond. I mean, that is 10, 20, 30 times faster than painting or than layout. So composite is very, very fast to do, while layout and painting are much slower. It takes a lot of energy for the browser to actually do that. Now let's swap over to our translate down here. So let's say translate down, we'll save that, and we're just gonna rerun our analytics. So we'll click record, wait a little bit of time, click stop, and now let's zoom in on one of these sections here. As you can see, if we go into our main, nothing is happening, essentially nothing at all. It's just very small little task sections. And the reason for that is because we don't have to do any re-layout. We don't have to do any of the repainting. The only thing that changes is the composite. That's why if we go down here to our compositor, we have very small little compositor tasks. Each one is taking, you know, less than a millisecond, you know, very, 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 very quick. We can see this even more if we just scroll this section up down here. This actually shows us where our actual, you know, computation is going. And as you can see, over this 219 millisecond period, Almost all of it is spent idle. A very little bit is spent on the GPU, but pretty much this entire time is just idle. It's not actually doing anything other than that small little 17 milliseconds of our GPU. Now, if we go back to this margin version, and we try to look at that exact same little pie chart, we just gotta make sure we rerun our record, give it a little bit of time, click stop. You can see that now, if we just highlight a small section here, 
we have a very drastic portion of our time being spent on rendering, which is that layout section. You can see the purple section here. Over half of our time is on layout. Painting is only 34 milliseconds, and we only have 15 milliseconds of system time and zero milliseconds idle. That means our computer is essentially churning at maximum speed because there's no idle time between these operations. And it's spending so much time on rendering and painting, which we didn't have to do in the translate version. So why is it that these two animations do the exact same thing? They both move the element down, but one of them actually causes the rendering and painting to happen, and the other one skips all of that and only does the compositing. Well, the reason for that is that whenever an element changes, and it could possibly change other elements around it. For example, if you change the margin on an element, everything below it also gets moved down. But when that happens, you need to relay out everything on your page that could be changed by that element doing the margin change. So when we changed our margin downwards, we have to look at all the other elements on our page that could possibly be affected and relay them all out on the page. That's what this rendering section is. It's very slow, and you don't want to do this if you don't have to. Painting, on the other hand, determines like colors. This is like when you change the background color of the element or the text color of an element. That's going to cause painting to be run. So when we move these elements, it's having to recalculate painting, and you wouldn't think it would because we're not changing any colors. But what happens is, Anytime you do a layout event in CSS, you have to also have painting come and then the composite comes after. So if you ever do layout, the whole tree has to run from top to bottom. So it says layout, painting, and then composite. If we just changed the color, we wouldn't have this layout phase and all we would have is painting and then composite. So if I were to create here a new keyframe that's gonna be for color, for example. So we'll just say color down. And we're gonna take the color from black and we'll just change it to Let's say white. Color down. Now we save that. You can see our text is fading from black to white. Let's do a little record for a little bit. Do, 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 do. Click stop. And now if we draw out one of these sections, you can see our rendering is so much smaller because it doesn't have to do all that layout calculations. It's pretty much just doing our painting calculations. So now let's swap this bark to margin here. Whoops, margin. Click save real quick. And I just want to scroll this down a little bit and do another record. And we'll just stop that there. And you can see here our frame time, and you'll see what our FPS is. You'll notice we got like 14, 26, 23, and this is why our animation looks really choppy. In order to have a smooth looking animation, you want your average FPS here to be about 60. That's gonna give you a very smooth looking animation that doesn't have any of the stutter that you can see on the right hand side here. And sometimes it gets very, very stuttery. So this, you know, 20, 24, this is really bad, really slow. And in order to dive even deeper to see exactly why that is so slow, we come up to these triple dots here, go down to more tools, whoops, more tools. You can find this rendering section here. And if we scroll this up, you can see we have a bunch of different options here. And probably my favorite ones to look at is paint flashing and layout shift regions. So let's click on paint flashing. What happens is every single time we do a repaint, the browser is going to flash green. And you can see it's a solid green box because it's just constantly repainting over and over and over again, every single frame. We do layout shifts, this is gonna give us a blue box every time we recalculate layout. And again, you can see it's just a solid big blue box because we're constantly recalculating that layout. So we have both of these happening at the same time every single frame, which drastically slows things down. We can even see that a step further, where if we click on the settings here, whoops, not settings, the triple dots, go to more tools, and we click on performance monitor, we can see our CPU usage, as well as our layouts per second and our style recalculations per second. So this is like layouts and painting essentially. And you notice our CPU usage is maxed out 100%, and we're doing about 20 of these calculations per second. And that's essentially our frame rate. That's the max calculations we can do, because it's doing one per frame. So we're only getting about 20 frames per second here. Now let's go over here, swap back to our translate, and see how that affects these different graphs. We'll say translate down. We'll come over here, and you notice immediately CPU has dropped from, you know, maxed out 100%. We're down to 3%, 2%. I mean, that is night and day difference that's 30 times faster essentially we have zero layout and style recalculations which means you're not wasting any time on layout and style recalcs instead of rendering here i can click paint flashing you'll notice no green color because we're never repainting same thing here with layout shifts when i click on this you'll notice we don't get any blue color because there's no layout shifting happening so let me just close this out here and talk about why exactly this happens as we already know we want to avoid layout and paint because they are incredibly slow and are going to make our animations chug along and potentially cause problems on lower powered computers. But how do we always know if we're avoiding layout or paint? Because this margin down and translate down, they both look like they do the exact same thing. But the major difference is when you modify an element's margin, 
it modifies its position, and then every other element around that has to recalculate its position. So the best way to think about when layout happens is whenever if you modify this property, it will cause other elements on the page to also modify their position. Because if you have a position absolute element, and you modify the top of that position absolute element and has nothing inside of it, the only thing that that's going to do is cause the recalculation of that one single element, because it's not attached to anything else in the document flow. While if you had just a normal element, no position on it, and you modified its position you know, by margin, for example, everything else around that has to recalculate itself. So the best properties that you can use if you want to do animations are going to be things inside of transform. And these are going to be whenever you translate an element, because translating an element just moves that one element, it doesn't recalculate anything else. You can do scale, which is going to scale that element without you know, doing any other recalculations inside of here. You can do rotation inside of here. Essentially, most things inside of transform are going to be safe to use. Also, something kind of surprising that you can use is opacity. And the reason opacity works so well is that there are certain optimizations that computers and graphical processing units have where they can actually do opacity without having to do a bunch of paint calculations that are going to be slow. So you can get away with using opacity as well, and it'll be faster than most normal paint operations. Now, those are all the properties right there that you can really animate super safely without having to worry about anything. But what about background color or color? Because all the time, if you hover a button, you kind of want to animate that background color to be different, or you may want to change the color of that element to be different. Well, if you use that sparingly, you use a few of them, and since it's only going to be doing the paint portion and not the whole layout recalculation, it's completely fine to do that. Just don't go overboard changing the color of your entire site all over the place to you know rambo, random rainbow colors, because that's going to tax the computer a little bit. But if you just you know have a button hover changing the color, that's not going to cause any problems that you're going to have to worry about. And that's all there is to all these crazy different CSS animation tricks. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my full CSS course. I'll have linked down in the description because I have information just like that scattered throughout the entire course, and it's incredibly useful if you want to take your CSS skills to the next level. So with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.